For over 100 million years, the mammals lived under the shadows of a group of reptiles known as the dinosaurs. However, around 66 million years ago an asteroid measuring 10 kilometers in diameter slammed into the Earth, ending the reign of the non-avian dinosaurs. In their place, a new group of animals came to fill their ecological roles. This group would include our own ancestors, the mammals. Other terrestrial vertebrates would also survive this horrific extinction event, including the dinosaurs' close relatives such as the birds, crocodilians, and other members of the reptile family tree. However, why did the mammals emerge to become the dominant terrestrial megafauna of the Cenozoic era? Why didn't the birds or other reptiles reclaim the previous roles once filled by the non-avian dinosaurs? In order to understand this, one must look at the physical attributes that the dinosaurs possessed that made them so successful in the first place. Similar to the non-avian dinosaurs, mammals possess an erect limb stance which allows this group of animals to develop longer legs and bear more weight without sacrificing their ability to move quickly over long distances. Dinosaurs like mammals, also developed a sophisticated set of teeth that allowed some species, such as hadrosaurs or ceratopsians to chew their food and as a result digest plant material more effectively than animals that possessed no teeth at all or lacked specialized grinding teeth. In addition, many species of dinosaurs, most notably theropod dinosaurs and sauropods had recently been discovered to have had a warm-blooded metabolism. This would have allowed dinosaurs to grow more quickly than other types of cold-blooded reptiles, and also possess greater stamina when traveling long distances. This was especially important for migratory animals that were required to travel great distances in search of new food or water resources. Other reptiles like modern turtles or lizards possess a sprawling limb stance with legs jutting out to the sides, rather than directly underneath their bodies. This type of limb positioning restricts how long modern reptiles' legs can grow, preventing them from being able to develop legs suitable enough to either migrate long distances, run very quickly, or even reach high foliage at the tops of trees like modern-day giraffes or for that matter even prehistoric sauropods like Brachiosaurus. In addition, like modern-day birds and mammals, dinosaurs likely would have possessed a four-chambered heart which would have allowed dinosaurs to oxygenate their bodies more effectively than other types of reptiles that only possessed three-chambered hearts, thus further increasing their stamina when migrating or traveling quickly. This advantage mammals would have had in being able to develop longer limbs and consequently being able to travel greater distances more effectively would have become even more important by the end of the Eocene. As the climate during the Cenozoic gradually became cooler and cooler, Lush tropical rainforests gave way to open grasslands and scrublands with more extreme seasonal temperature fluctuations which further required the need to migrate in search of better grazing areas for herbivores. A warm-blooded metabolism also would have allowed mammals to better adapt to these temperature fluctuations than Cenozoic reptiles like turtles, crocodiles, or lizards which could not handle those cooler environments. Even in areas of the world such as subtropical zones that are typically considered to be perfect climate for humans would have given a cold-blooded reptiles a disadvantage. Similar to mammals, birds also possessed a warm-blooded metabolism, a four-chambered heart, and an erect limb stance that allowed birds to migrate in search of new resources quickly and more effectively than their Cenozoic reptile counterparts. However, Unlike their ancestors, the non-avian dinosaurs or even mammals for that matter, the only birds to survive the KT mass extinction event were all toothless species and would have been incapable of chewing their food like prehistoric dinosaur species like hadrosaurs could. This would have limited the type of ecological niches they could evolve into, and as a result didn't fill those roles. Mammals like odd toad or even toad ungulates had a sophisticated set of grinding teeth called molars that allowed mammals to grind and digest their food more effectively which is similar to many species of dinosaurs. As a result, mammals due to their possession of teeth, and also more versatile teeth would have been better suited to fill the roles of the non-avian dinosaurs better than even the dinosaurs' own descendants, the birds. All these physical attributes would have played a significant part in the eventual success of mammals, and especially herbivorous mammals. One of the things that you may have noticed in the history of the Cenozoic was the differing dominance of large herbivorous mammals in comparison to large predatory mammals. Relatively early on, especially by the time of the Oligocene and onward, mammalian herbivores quickly became the dominant large megafauna. 
The most successful of these were both odd and even toed ungulates which were the most numerous large animals during this time period. Some odd toed ungulates such as rhinos grew to immense sizes. Proboscideans along with other large-bodied herbivorous mammals were the largest terrestrial animals during the Cenozoic era. No herbivorous birds or reptiles during the Cenozoic even came close to the size of the biggest elephants or rhinos. The largest herbivorous bird of the Cenozoic, the elephant bird and the largest herbivorous reptiles such as the giant megalocelles, an extinct relative to modern tortoises never exceeded three tons in weight. All other large terrestrial herbivores greater than 3,000 kg in weight during the Cenozoic era were either a proboscidean, ungulate, sloth, or in the case of Australia, even a large marsupial. This supremacy however was not the case for carnivorous niches. By the time of the Miocene, mammalian predators such as entelodonts, hyenodonts, and carnivorans had already established themselves as the top predators in four out of the six habitable continents. There were two continents however where this was not the case. Both South America and Australia for the majority of the Cenozoic was under the control of both reptilian and avian predators such as large land crocodiles, giant monitor lizards, and gigantic flesh-eating birds commonly called the terror birds. So the question some of you may be asking, why were plant-eating herbivorous mammals so uncontested through the majority of the Cenozoic era, but flesh-eating mammalian carnivores were? In order to understand this, we need to look back at some of the evolutionary traits we covered previously. Certain traits such as a warm-blooded metabolism and the ability to grind down and chew food aren't necessarily an advantage for predatory niches. A high metabolic rate may provide an advantage for migrating herbivores due to the greater stamina it would provide them, but when it came to predatory niches, a high metabolism can actually be a drawback. A higher metabolic rate requires more food intake, and acquiring animal-derived protein isn't as easy to get as plant material. Carnivores need to catch their food first before eating it, which is not the case for herbivores. As a result, warm-blooded carnivores are at higher risk of starvation than cold-blooded predators as well as warm-blooded herbivores. In addition, chewing an animal carcass is also not necessarily an advantage either. Chewing your food takes more time, and the longer a predator takes consuming a carcass, the more likely it is to get stolen. As a result, predatory birds and reptiles weren't at as much of a disadvantage against mammalian carnivores because chewing animal flesh wasn't nearly as much of a requirement as chewing tough to digest plant vegetation like conifers or grasses. Another advantage birds and reptiles would also have had which allow them to compete with mammals for predatory niches was due to the lack of concern for loosing their primary weapons. Unlike mammals, Reptiles like crocodilians continue to regrow teeth throughout their life, and birds rely on powerful beaks instead of teeth for dispatching prey. As a result, both avian and reptilian carnivores never have to worry about losing their teeth like mammalian predators. This would help explain why mammals didn't immediately become the top predators on all of the world's six habitable continents. But as we can see from this comparison of evolutionary traits, Despite the fact we still have the dinosaurs' relatives living among us today. Their close relatives lacked certain structural advantages which allowed mammals to fill the majority of megafaunal niches to come. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and yes, as I mentioned before in the community section I will be occasionally using this type of narration style. But don't worry, my voice will be back soon for other videos. This is King Theropod. Signing out.